this course Newtonian mechanics with examples, let us continue our study of uh, statics that is the mechanical equilibrium uh, for with different examples. In the uh, last few lectures, we reviewed the tension force and uh, we sort of uh, told about uh, the, dif the different uh, properties of the tension force when it is in form, when it is along the uh, line uh, of tangent and so on. And then we considered an example of a um, interesting and uh, very common uh, uh, example from everyday life which is about the ropes, hanging ropes or hanging cables or suspension cables. Today the plan is to take another uh, very uh, interesting and very common example which has lots of practical engineering application as well. So, today we are talking about truss or the framework. So, here is the plan for how to go about it. So, first we will take a few examples and then we define the question that we are going to analyze. Then we will uh, um, use our systematic method of analysis and take different uh, uh, worked out example to sort of tell you how to solve this kind of problems. Then uh, we will consider a in very important question which is that uh, under what condition we can determine this tension forces uniquely. And uh, we will see that uh, this problem is really interesting because uh, this is uh, usually when we talk about truss, we the things that comes to our mind are from mechanical engineering problems or civil engineering problems. But we shall take a very different uh, uh, situation and example and we will show that this kind of analysis is kind uh, very generally applicable to other kinds of problems which you may not uh, is, uh, usually uh, think uh, in from your uh, uh, engineering curriculum. And I particularly like this problem because it sort of gives you a, a very interesting way to see the relation between the basic physics and uh, basic physical principles and the engineering point of view or the application point of view. So, let us start. So, here I show you uh, four different pictures. So, one picture is a part of a bridge, the another pic couple of pictures this one and this one are about uh, roofs and this is a picture of a crane which is supporting a load. Now, what is common about these pictures? So, what is common about these pictures and in all these cases there are some sort of an external load such as this car or whatever uh, tiles you are going to put on this roof or this roof and this roof here, uh, this load here. And to support this load, the engineers have designed a framework of beams uh, joined together. So, such as what is shown in this picture here and this uh, the wooden beams that are connected. So, these are the and, and this crane the uh, is, is made up of this uh, connected beams. So, these uh, are kind of the important engineering structure and the goal is to keep the whole thing in uh, equilibrium such that this bridge does not collapse or this roof does not collapse or the crane is able to uh, uh, lift this weight in a safe way. Now, uh, so let us uh, continue more. Now, if you are going to be uh, looking at this problem from a mechanical or civil engineering point of view, maybe you are going to be interested in designing this kind of framework. Now, I, I should uh, uh, clarify here that in this course, our goal from we are going to study this problem from physics point of view. So, our goal is not to teach you how to design uh, this how uh, different kinds of uh, frameworks, but uh, to sort of help you see wh how you are going to apply basic physical principles. So, the simple conditions of force balance and torque balance to sort of uh, that will enable you to design arbitrary uh, types of structure. 
So, let us define uh, more uh, precisely what is truss. Truss is a framework, framework uh, means like these beams which are connected. So, it is composed of members joined at their ends to form a rigid structure. So, this word rigid is important and this is called as truss. And examples are like as you shown before the bridges and roof supports etcetera. Now, if I uh, say in a plain English, then you can simply from physics point of view, you can simply think of the truss as some sticks such as mat sticks joined at the ends. Like if you take some uh, mat sticks and join them by glue at the ends and then you can build uh, this kind of frames and that is our toy example of a truss. Now, note that there are uh, two types of frameworks possible, one in which the sticks uh, joined and these frames are forming a planar structure which means all the uh, sticks or beams they are in the same plane. So, this is a plane or two dimensional truss. The other possibility of course, is that uh, so, let us say for example, using four sticks in plane you can make a uh, like a quadrilateral, but in three dimension you can make a pyramid. So, this is an example. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, okay, there are 6 sticks here. So, this is an example of a three dimensional framework or which is also called a space truss. Now, we are going to for simplicity, we are going to take examples with two dimensional truss, it is easier to draw and analyze and again, but the method of solution will remain more or less same if you go to three dimension, it is just the calculation becomes slightly more complicated. So, let us now define the question. So, what we are going interested in is that in a given, we are considered this situation where there is some external load such as this car on the bridge and there is a structure such as this uh, framework of beams which makes this bridge. So, which is supporting this load and this important point of the structure is that these are not a continuous structure, it is made up of sticks and these sticks are joined uh, connected at some joints. So, there are some supports from the joint. So, these are the three pieces. Now, we want to know that, so we want to analyze how this external load can be supported by this framework. So, such as the questions we can be interested in is that, so to support this load there will be some internal force or which we call the, the tension force which will appear in the beam. So, how much is the tension force in these beams and how much is the contact force at the joints? So, these are the two crucial uh, question uh, whose answer will determine the stability of such structures or rigidity of such structures. Now, of course, we need a few uh, assumptions to simplify our problem because in general, I will, it will be clear in a moment, in general it is a difficult problem. Why? What makes this problem difficult? So, these beams are actually a massive structure like if they are made of steels or irons, they are massive heavy structures. But we are going to assume that these beams are massless. Now, we have reviewed this uh, assumption in uh, previous, uh, one of the previous lectures. So, it basically means that we are there the external loads are quite high. So, that the weight of the individual beams uh, can be neglected compared to the load they support. So, this is a uh, very simple assumptions because we saw that it sort of immediately it follows that the tension force along the beam is uniform throughout. So, we do not have to consider the uh, variation of the tension force along a beam. So, in that case you can sort of think of these beams as kind of a transmitter of force between two joints. The other assumption required to just to uh, a very important assumption is that you are going to assume that their lengths are also fixed. So, the distance between two joints is always the same no matter what the external load is. So, there is no extension, no contraction, no any kind of deformation or crack or fracture 
or uh, some sort of a torsion or bending or twist swing swing in air etcetera. So, all these kinds of motions are possible for real uh, such structures and they are important like if you really want to build a such structure you want you want to consider all these important effects. But for our uh, analysis we are going to ignore those effects to make our life simple. So, this is actually a very idealistic situation, but this will sort of tell you that uh, our focus is on the like learning free body diagram and applying the basic uh, uh, law uh, conditions of force and torque balance. So, we are going to ignore all these things. So, those of you who are uh, kind of uh, will be uh, actually thinking of doing uh, design of bridges etcetera, they will consider all these things in your uh, respective engineering discipline in uh, later years. So, if you ignore all those effects then the only internal force that the beam can support is the tension which is a force uh, that is acting along the length of the beam in uh, and uh, uh, at a direction which is ta tangent. And we are going to assume that there is no bending of such beams, these beams are basically straight line. So, there is no curvature of the beams. Unlike the previous problem that we discussed of sus suspended cable or hanging rope, where the rope was perfectly flexible, so that it could, uh, it could, um, but in this case we are going to assume that these beams are perfectly rigid, inflexible. So, the tension force is always along the direction of the beam and because we ignore all those other kinds of internal force, different kinds of deformation of the beams. So, it immediately and the beam is massless, so it immediately follows that tension force is uniform throughout the beam. Now, in this case our problem is uh, what is called a simple stress, so that each beam element or each element beam you can sort of think of it as so this is connected at two ends by some support and the only interaction is happening sort of as if happening only at the support and so this beam is interact so if you consider this one beam as your system then the surrounding is and the support so this is if i consider this as my system and then the support is in the surrounding then the uh, the beam is interacting with the support at the end so for the if the whole beam is in equilibrium is in a static condition it is motionless it is not moving then it immediately follows that that forces by the surrounding that is by the support end end of the joint of the beam on the beam must be equal and opposite so that the net force is zero. Now there are two possibilities: either the uh, these uh, contact forces between the beam and the support is directed towards the support away from the beam. In that case, it is the it is uh, by convention it is called a tension, or the contact forces. So, the, so these are the contact forces. Contact interaction. between the beam that is our system and support that is the surrounding. The other possibility is that the direction can be in the opposite so that the um, beam is uh, the support is putting a force which is into the beam in that case by convention it is called compression. So, this is about the direction there are just two possible direction along the along a straight line and the uh, for the force balance the to these two forces at the end must be equal and opposite. And the uh, other thing is that the so just to say it on the from the other point of view. So, in returns because these contact forces are uh, in like real interaction. So, by Newton's third law if the forces are giving uh, contact supports are uh, exerting force on the beam in return by Newton's third law beams are also exerting forces on the on, on the supports or the joints. So, for example, uh, if I look at this diagram. So, let us say there are uh, these two beams which are joined at this 
point uh, at the at the support common support uh, 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 like which is also called a node. So, then the A B is the force by the node on this particular beam and uh, sorry uh, the, uh, the this uh, the this this force is the force on the beam by this joint. So, by Newton's third law there this this is the force which is the reaction force. So, this force is by the beam so, this is a beam and this force is on the beam this is on the joint and this is by the joint. So, they are action reaction pair and we are going to also assume a crucial assumption that all the forces uh, that is if there are more than uh, two, two or more than two beams are connected at, at a common joint then the line of action of all the force are passing through the same point. So, this is a simplifying assumption. I mean the point is that in general this joint covers uh, some particular area, but we are going to replace it by a point. So, we are going to assume that the line of action of uh, all the tension or compression forces are passing concurrent. Now, the uh, second important point that we need to uh, keep in mind is that the contact forces and the torques uh, at the between the beam and the support it depends on the type of the joint. So, there are several different types of joint possible. For example, this type of joint that is shown in this picture is called a pin joint because this is a pivot point it is a common point and this beam is sort of. So, this red part is the fixed part of the support and this uh, blue is the beam and this is connect is kind of hinged at uh, one point as if uh, of the of the support. So, this is called a pin joint and again there can be two kinds of possibilities. So, for example, this joint can be kind of welded together in a way so that this beam cannot rotate. Uh, so, sorry. So, let us consider the case where the beam can rotate. So, it is free to turn. So, in this case there is the beam you can see that it cannot support any torque because if you apply even a small amount of torque on the beam on, on the on the beam and the, then the beam will rotate. So, this type of joint uh, pin joint will not support any torque, but there will be some force and this force in general is uh, can be uh, in in any direction which, which so this force is a plane. So, this this uh, so this support is and the beam together they form a plane let us say the plane of the screen and uh, in general there will be two components um, and uh, uh, so, so the deep, uh, uh, so, so there will be a force and in general this force is unknown. Uh, the other possibility is that the beam is uh, kind of uh, welded in a such a way that it the beam cannot rotate. In that case the difference is that in that case not only there is a contact force, but also there could be a contact torque which is denoted by this uh, uh, quantity m the moment of the force m. Now, there could be other the another type of support is a fixed support such as this rod or beam which is inserted in some wall as if it can be also welded. In that case again there could be a in general there could be a force which is along the uh, uh, along the axis and now uh, and there could be a torque. Uh, so, this joint can also withstand a torque uh, applied on it uh, because it is fixed and it can withstand a contact force. Now, this in general this contact force like in this pre example and in this example can be in uh, I mean this is a in the this will be in the plane of this uh, support, but it need not be along the axis. It is only when we ignore 
any per force internal force which is perpendicular to this axis such as shear force which arises because of the deformation of the beam uh, only then we say uh, we, we can assume that this force will be perfectly and along the axis. Similarly, in this previous in the pin joint case in general the direction of the force can be different from the axis of the beam. But if we have make those assumptions that such that we ignore all other kinds of internal forces like elastic forces etcetera, then this perpendicular component cannot exist and there is a simple simpler version where we can assume that our force will be along the beam. And then there is another uh, uh, men, let me mention another type of support which is called the roller support. In this particular case, so there is a so the the support point the pivot point can is put on a roller and let us and we assume that there is no friction between the roller and the surface on which it is roll it rolls and it can move in the horizontal direction. So, this kind of support the point is that it there can be only the force in the normal direction because any force in the horizontal direction in a direction in which the support can roll it will make the support roll. So, it will no longer be in a condition of mechanical equilibrium. So, this is a roller support which uh, can support only force normal to the supporting surface ignoring friction. So, these are some of the common type of uh, supports I mentioned because uh, it may be like you will encounter them in real life and various problems. So, given all these assumptions, uh, let us now re, uh, define the problem, understand the problem that we have, the nature of the problem or the type of the problem. So, what we have here is that this whole structure is at rest as the first thing. So, we can apply this in a statics problem. So, we, are, it's a, we can apply the condition of force and torque balance. Now, the there are two rules that you uh, saw two assumptions that uh, not assumptions. So, this is basically it follows from the Newton's laws of motion if we apply the condition of force and torque balance is that on any single beam. So, no matter how complicated is your uh, given structure or the framework total force on any single beam is 0 that is the first thing and the total force on any joint is also 0. So, for example, if we take a some structure like this, so we have it is made up of two parts one is called a joint or which is also we will call the node some point and then it is connected by beams or some straight line some sticks. So, total at if the whole structure is at mechanical equilibrium that means that the total force on any of the beam is 0 at the and as well as the total force on any of the node is also 0. So, these are the two rules that you should keep in mind. Now, let us also in this kind of problem you should be very clear about what is given and what there is what is known and what is unknown. Usually in these problems the external loads are known. So, you are going to design some structure with, with a which can operate within a given uh, load and then the structure responds by generating the tension force along the beam and these internal tensions are kind of, uh, so these are essentially the contact forces at the, uh, at the joint at the support and these forces are unknown because the nature of this force. So, this is a force I emphasize this point again. So, this is a force contrasted to it something like a weight of the structure. So, if you know the mass of the beam then uh, or the mass of the whole structure then the weight is always mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So, it is always known without doing any calculation, but the internal tension forces are unknown and if we want to calculate those uh, unknown forces we have to apply these conditions of uh, these uh, force and torque balance and, uh, and solve those equations to determine those unknown forces. So, we shall continue taking a concrete example and apply this framework uh, in the next lecture. Thank you.